So these videos are called Blooms, Bugs and Such, which basically means updates and uh, random things, uh, mostly uh, all uh, related to my orchid. So uh, let's go. Hello and welcome to the Arcade Saga. My name is Ilkjan Wiesma, also known as EJ. So yes, uh, today finally another Blooms, Buts and Such, which is basically a bit of a vlog type of video, which I personally uh, really enjoy making because I can uh, use a little bits and pieces that not necessarily need a own video. I can put them together and make uh, one video out of it. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I have a request. I have some uh, new blooms uh, blooming, first time bloomers and uh, some updates. But the first thing I uh, wanted to mention is, uh, maybe you know it, maybe not, is that uh, me and my husband, we run a, a wildlife rehabilitation center. Uh, it's been a, in our family for 46 years, so I think it's quite special. But this is the time of year where a lot of youngsters do come in, and we have mainly birds, we do all kinds of animals, but mainly it's birds. And uh, so yeah, I have to feed a lot. Uh, currently, I'm on a schedule of uh, feeding every uh, one and a half hour. Um, so during the day, and that is quite, quite, uh, quite a lot. I really enjoy it, but it limits me a little bit time-wise to making videos. But anyhow, I try to put uh, at least one video up every Sunday uh, because I really enjoy uh, this uh, arc growing and my channel, of course, and you guys, the lovely comments that I uh, always get. It's uh, really uh, appreciated. So anyhow, that's, that's a bit of a limit uh, that I have uh, for a few months. Uh, but, it, but it's okay, I think I'm going to manage uh, like uh, other years. But anyhow, I did shoot some footage with my telephone, so uh, uh, I think I did yesterday. I thought maybe you want a little bit of an update, maybe you're curious to see uh, me in action uh, in uh, my work. And so here are a few clips of me feeding the youngsters. And meanwhile... And meanwhile, um, I might uh, explain that we uh, do uh, mainly uh, do uh, this volunteering and we uh, completely are uh, living from donations. So we don't have any government support yet. We are working for it for uh, more than 40 years, but yeah, it still did not, uh, not happen. Anyhow, so for, for people who might feel a little bit extra, uh, um, please email me to the arcadesaga at uh, hotmail.com if you want to support our work. Feel free, of course, but anyhow, you never know if people want to support our work. It would be obviously uh, highly appreciated. But anyhow, here uh, you saw just some, some youngsters that I was feeding. Like I said, I'm now on the schedule from, uh, for um, every uh, half an hour, uh, uh, one hour and a half, I'm sorry. But if they're really, really teeny tiny, then I uh, need to feed them every half hour. But so far, we didn't get those uh, this year yet. But most of the time, you do get a few of these teeny tiny uh, little uh, youngsters. Most of the time, uh, something happened with the parents, cats. Uh, I really, uh, it's, it's a hot subject, I know, but cats do, uh, do, can do quite some harm 
with these birds. So if you have cats, please watch your birds outside in the garden. Maybe you want to keep your cats inside for a few days so that these youngsters have time to learn to fly. And once they can, can fly, most of the time it just takes a few days, three to seven days. Um, yeah, I think even short, three to five days, something like that. And they really can fly and they can protect themselves and fly away if a cat uh, approaches them, etc. But they need, they need a few days to, to learn. So yeah, if you have cats, maybe you want to watch it and keep them inside for just a few days. So this, these beautiful little birds have uh, some time to, uh, to uh, learn to fly. Like I said. Anyhow, this is um, currently the youngsters, like I said, but we do get uh, also, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, ducks that have broken wings or broken seeds, uh, other diseases. Uh, yeah, basically anything you can think about that happens, uh, accidents that happen to them uh, come in and we uh, try to take good care of them, of course. We do this seven days a week. We start from nine in the morning into nine in the evening. So that's 12 hours a day that we are open for people that find uh, wild animals and they need to bring them somewhere and uh, obviously they uh, come here. Um, if necessary, we are open uh, even longer if, there's, if there is a major problem with, with animals. But most of the times we can manage it in, uh, in 12 hours a day. Uh, that doesn't mean that I start my day at 9, I start my day currently at around 6, 6.30, uh, because then I need to start my feeding schedule, and it goes into the evening uh, of around 11 to 12 o'clock. It depends on how old the birds are. But anyhow, and I love it, don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful job. Um, yeah, I've been, I, I just don't know better than the, uh, the uh, Rehabilitation center was in my family because I'm 41 years old and like I said earlier it uh, does exist for 46 years So it's basically an honor I could say to do this work Anyhow, that's just a little bit of background so if you want to know more about it I can film more if you like but I know this is an archive channel So it's basically up to you. I'm not completely sure if you enjoy uh, watching these type of videos Anyhow, just a little bit of an explanation uh, of my job so I think you can now understand, obviously we love orchids, so it doesn't matter uh, what type of life you have, but I love it uh, here. Uh, I, we do get a lot of people that, uh, like I said, bring in the birds and etc. so it can be quite busy, but here it's quiet and peaceful. I'm surrounded by uh, beautiful blooms, as you can see, and this hobby uh, means a lot. I can really empty my head and just be in my own world. And I love it and I absolutely love sharing it. So I hope you enjoy it as well. But anyhow, that, that's just clear my mind in here. And, and like I said, enjoying the blooms. It's so quiet and peaceful. It's absolutely wonderful. Okay, so that's it and done. I have also an update to do. And uh, that was, uh, that is for Mary Faye, if I remember your name correctly. You asked me uh, for an update on my vanilla orchid. It's been a while, I apologize. Uh, but I just needed time to make a Bloom's Buds in such a video. Uh, so I'm going to start with that one. I'm going to grab the camera and we will have a look at my, uh, my vanilla orchid. And then uh, some uh, new uh, bloomers and also my first update on the Vandas. Not that long ago I did put my Vandas in a new setup. So I thought it's also nice to have uh, give them an update. So uh, let's start the updates. So yes, for those who've been longer on my channel, Maybe remember that I had my vanilla growing over here and it just was about to reach ceiling over here. And that is why I have this grid panels over here and over here. My idea was when I started this greenhouse to let my vanilla grow around it to my whole uh, greenhouse. Well, <laughs> so far, I didn't manage to uh, accomplish that yet. Anyhow, I also did get a new greenhouse uh, floor not that long ago. If I don't forget, I will. Uh, uh, put that video in the, as a link in this video. But the construction worker said, well, we can work around it so you can leave the plant over there. So I did, and then obviously they changed their mind, they didn't ask, but they grabbed the pot and put it over there. And that's how it snapped, of course, because it was attached and it was growing outside of the pot. So yeah, that was kind of nice. I like, why didn't you ask? We talked about it, but anyhow, it happened. On the other hand, uh, because I had the pot fairly low of the vanilla, and vanilla like uh, warm temperatures, and in winter I don't, I cannot give it. Uh, for years I thought, well, if I know better, I 
better could have put the pots uh, near the ceiling because most of the time there's the weather warm, uh, the heat collects. Uh, so I thought, well, maybe it's that, therefore a little bit easier for it to, to get it to grow. But yeah, it was already established there and now I needed to change and to repot it uh, anyhow. So I thought I'm going to change the setup. So what I did, I don't want to make you dizzy, I put it now over there in that corner. So it's very close to the ceiling, to the roof of the greenhouse. So more light and more heat. But they, this is basically a cutting where I was left with. And so far, as you can see, I tried to start it on the roof but it doesn't have a new growing tip yet. I'm checking while I'm talking about it, but yeah, so I needed to fill up the reservoir a few times, so I think it's growing. It's starting to uh, hydrate again, but like I said, no new growing tip. Maybe I can put a camera inside. I don't, I cannot see it from a cell. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, we have some roots. The uh, actual bulb, well, no, not the bulb, I'm sorry. The actual uh, first part of the vein, where it snapped, had all the roots. So I needed to put in, to try put in a few of these aerial roots. And some are curling up here, as you can probably see. But yeah, I think so far it's kind of doing okay. It's hanging in there. It's not completely dehydrated because it's been now for a few months here. So otherwise it would have been dead or really weak leaves there's they're kind of firm still so i think it does get the water but yeah that's an update on my vanilla you guys i hope i will get a new growth from this one so i can it's right to the roof and i can right away start growing it maybe another direction <laughs> another uh, secondary growth over here that can go over there who knows and there it's Only time for some blooms don't you think look at these these are not the same as in my last blooming update. Then I did show uh, also purpurata blooms. This is a Lelia purpurata. And that one I had listed as a work hershery eye, which is not the correct name, I believe, for that one. Paula from Hillbilly helped me out. She said, no, that's definitely not a work hershery eye. She has the one and it does look uh, completely different. But then this one opened. This is the first time bloom. It's not that of old plant as you can see beautiful spike it's first uh, for the first time for beautiful blooms but i have this one listed and i think they're coming from the same seller i'm not even sure maybe it's the same one but this is i have this one uh, as a preparata varietas friada it very really looks similar very much similar to the previous one i took pictures so i, I need to uh, see if they are completely similar but it's Triada, I miss the Triada. Triada are the stripes. It should have stripes, at least on the petals, maybe on the sepals, I'm not completely sure. But there's nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nonetheless, I love it, don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's kind of sad if you buy plants and they are just mislabeled. Maybe, maybe it's a difference it's, uh, if it's our seedlings, I'm not completely sure, but yes, Triada should have stripes. And it doesn't. But like I said, I need to take uh, the pictures and compare them and see. This look extremely similar to the previous one that I had in the room. So the mislabeled one as well. Who knows? Anyhow, if they are similar, I have one to share. It's absolutely beautiful. But it would make room for uh, perhaps an Strayada of work cursory if I uh, see them ever again for sale. So yeah, a little update on a purpurata. And there, as promised, an update on my vendas. Well, so far, they are still looking uh, okay, but we are uh, currently, uh, of course, curious and more focused on what's inside of the pots. Well, let's we'll start with this one. Look at that. I have a lot of new roots starting to grow. I must say, this is the time of year where they really normally also start growing roots. But I have been watered in for quite a few times now. And I was a bit afraid that the glue that I used may be toxic, but so far, it looks very promising. This one as well, look at that. Quite some new roots there, starting. Some do uh, grow over the uh, brick there. A few, not that much, but some new roots over 
view that you can see the bad algae that I was talking about in that video. I will uh, try to link it as well. Not much going on here yet. But here, that's. Whoops, there it is. A new work tip. And this is on my wrinkle stylus. And then the red one. And these leaves are perfectly strong again. They were very weak and sloppy, but I cannot bend them anymore. So these are doing pretty fine as well. Much better than what I did before. Then we have one here. This is the one that I did get from Insa. I call it Adana Pink. <laughs> well, loads of new roots and it's working on a cakey. That was already there before the repot. The one next to it, also new roots. This is the Avenda Orange Brown. Then yeah, this one, it's a uh, Avenda Vanda Dao Lande. <laughs> is the name. Never had it in bloom, but it uh, really starts growing roots as well. And then here are the big babies, <laughs> the big mamas. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, a lot of cakeys. And this one is the same. Luckily, a lot of new roots. And this one, the yellow one, new roots, new roots everywhere. Also here, new roots starting in a very large new root over here and there in the back. Yeah, you can see the green tip. So, so far, I think I'm just lucky. And that this glue is not uh, toxic for my veinas. So, yeah. So far, I'm really, really happy because I can really enter the pots quite easily. I can spray them now more easily than uh, when they were in places. So, uh, so far, I'm pretty, pretty happy with the setup. And not that long ago, I did a beautiful Phenoliopsis uh, haul, a YouTube haul. Well, we have some in bloom. There is this one. Look, absolutely stunning. I hope you can see the tag. I cannot see it from here. But uh, if you really want to know, maybe you can not read it. Please let me know. But there is one of them. And I don't want to show here. The main text is the closet, if you want to know it, and this is the world of that. Absolutely stunning. A really bit of waxy type of bloom, as you can probably see as well. So, yeah, very, very nice. This one was already in bloom, and still has a bloom there. Try to turn this around. There you go. So, yeah. Some, uh, most of them are really doing fine, and as soon as they are on the wall, that means that they are adapted and growing the roots. So the rest is uh, not there yet, but doing fine. Oh, well, actually, I'm sorry, this one is also in the hall. This is the purple, the peps, the, uh, the peps, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. A beauty, absolutely stunning. So I uh, still have a few over here. I can keep close eye on them and I still have them in a, a wet dry cycle. If I don't forget, <laughs> probably not. I will uh, add uh, that a video in the six easy steps to uh, in the adaptation that I do and make a video about it. I think it's a very easy to follow one if you are interested. But that's what I currently are. I am at step five with these. <laughs> if you're going to watch the video of Saw it already. Still some fails in bloom. So it's a beautiful spike. Absolutely enjoy it. It's very heavy. One one bloom, well actually two, but this one didn't come out as, as it should. <laughs> but anyhow, it's still beautiful. Sorry. So let's get over here. I don't hope to get too much noise on the van, but I have the van running. It's so warm. We have a few more blooms in this one, Estiva. And I absolutely love them. So stunning and beautiful. Miltonia Festiva. It's this one. Absolutely beautiful. So my Nobles, I just did a video on them, but it was pre-recorded. They are mostly done blooming. But yet I still have some uh, Endormia Phenoliopsis that are still in bloom or even making new spikes. I have... Oh, that's one that's just opened. 
all this new one this. I didn't realize it. It did, it did sort of spike. What a beautiful dark red color. Let me zoom in because I don't, I'm not sure if it shows up. I hope it does now. It's hard for me to see on my screen I'm working with, but look at that one. Let me zoom out. Oops, it's zooming in. Zoom out. I'm sorry. I will get you the name. This is the Lendrobium Oriental Bloody Rats. Ooh, Bloody Rats. And it's bloody beautiful. <laughs> that was stunning. I like the back as well as that. That's well, it's, if it's fully in bloom, I will uh, turn it around and we will have a better look at it. Another beauty and broken fell here. So yeah, those are doing fine. This one is smelling so good. Sherry baby. And some more fells over here. And then I have another update. It's fairly important if you enjoy my channel and my setup, I think. I'm testing these extra holes basically in my pots. I hope you can see them. There you go. So I did it all around these pots. And that is for extra air. These are uh, these holes, these pots I'm using on my um, brush here, a brush of all the types, I'm sorry. Because uh, they kind of do well, especially in uh, spring and summer. But in winter, they have a really hard time to uh, keep their roots because the water is getting a little bit too uh, cold during winter in my reservoir. And there, as you can see with the moss, I did take some off, but it, it makes it also almost uh, like oh, it acts like a seal on top of the pot. So, in that combination, is not good. So I did take it, uh, take some moss out. I did put some holes in in some of the pots. Like I said, I'm testing them. I also have these baskets, very open as you can see. And here is my uh, yellow bird. Beautiful. Whoops, I'm sorry for the leaf there. Beautiful roots coming out. So way more air, and I think they're going to enjoy it. But it's a bit of a new new type of setup. So I, I don't change the self watering obviously, but more air. Like I said, because if the moss is acting like a seal, then uh, the air, there's no more air exchange, or basically nothing. If there's not much moss, we still have some air exchange, but not much. So I thought I'm going to put in the holes and some moss, and some have even a different setup. As you can see, more room aside of the pot. I also burned some holes inside of the, the inner pot, where the artist is actually sitting in, in this case. These are in net, net pots, as you can see. Um, yeah, I'm not lifting them out because you know, all, all the time I do that, every time I do that, I break the roots. It's a bit sad. But I can, uh, can make a separate video about it. Just starting this. So it's a new uh, sort of setup, new uh, try, uh, try something new, basically. Without changing the whole setup, of course. But anyhow, I think... Um, but I know for sure, like we all probably know, that in winter the air is uh, warmer than, than the water. So that's why I try to get more air in. That's the first thing, plus the gas exchange. When they uh, take up oxygen, uh, oxygen, I'm sorry, <laughs> and they try to release it, the uh, carbon something, I always forget the, the word, but the, the gas exchange cannot, basically not happen if there's no room for air exchange, and you come fresh air in, and the old air, the gases can come out. So that's why I try, uh, try a bit of a new setup. I found this personally very interesting, <laughs> but I don't know about you guys. But it's uh, because I love uh, the system. Yeah, I can take, take this one out. This, oops. This one is a bivoliate, same story. The warm growers. I, uh, I lose too much roots, not on all of them, but a bit too much. We have new root growth here, but you can see the holes in the pot. And this one fits nicely in the bottom, especially when I have two hands. <laughs> but you can see, there's air. Not much moss yet, because I just rebut it, so I took the moss out. I love moss, don't get me wrong, but yeah, I don't need a lid or a shield on there. Okay, anyhow, you can see the water. Loads of air and that combination, most of the time, my artists love. You can see here, there's an aerial root. See? They start growing and growing and growing and growing. 
string, very, very, very long, <laughs> and it's from this one, by Sea Breeze. And here is still the Sea Breeze with the new root. I'm waiting for the new root because I need to repot it. The root inside of the pot I just lost, you can see. I think because of the problem we just discussed. A lot of moss, no air, this is uh, also fitting perfectly, <laughs> but that means that the air cannot come in and out. I don't have holes here where I shoot, just about the water uh, reservoir. I think I should. Especially for the warm growers, keep that in mind. You find this for the warm growers mainly. And a few, I do some tests on the more cooler growers if it makes a difference for them. But I will keep you posted. Let me know if you like this type of uh, changes, updates, projects, I should say. <laughs> but what I wanted to show you, it's a bit hard, but I hope you can see it. Let's zoom in. Do you see what is growing there? I just checked it the other day. This is a carnival plant. Well, believe me, I didn't plant it there. So somehow a seed must have fallen in and it did, did sprout and it started to grow. So I have a carnival plant there. And yeah, here, I'm sorry, I cannot see what I'm doing. Here, there, you can see it. There's another one starting. <laughs> How funny. And yeah, kind of, no, it's not really funny, but I did lost the parents the, of these plants. So I, I do have it again. This is that carnival. Or I yet I still had it, but I didn't realize. But yeah, with the repot, I might take them out. I'm not completely sure. But anyhow, some extra carnival plants, which is great. But anyhow, that is the tree breeze. So we have a, a very, very, very long area root, and I'm planning on just letting it be completely aerial. Otherwise, I need to break it. But yeah, like I said, it needs a repot. That's happened with with not all, but with um, for me just. The too, a few too much uh, warm loving orchids that are losing or just the tips that are reaching the reservoir and those die off and the rest stays uh, alive but hmm, that needs to change uh, if I can change it so I, uh, I'm doing these, these types of projects just to see how they uh, respond and so far I'm thinking uh, I think they are doing okay as you can see here in the background same setup a lot of area roots and they go inside now so they're really reaching for uh, the reservoir. Funny enough, next to it is my uh, <laughs> uh, Iwanagara, the pink one. Those were already there, so uh, that, those roots are not searching for the reservoir. But here you can see, this one is uh, going for it. So I think it's the combination of the water and the air. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I learned something again. I know that they obviously uh, like both, but how... Um, and maybe um, I should put it like that, I, how I learned to uh, get it established, more air in the setup that I'm using. I hope that does make sense. You can see, more roots going for the reservoir on there. It's beautiful. So yeah, the, and that's what I love about this hobby. There's always something to work at, and I really try to look at my plants and to get the best potential out of them. So this one obviously is very, very happy. Look at the blooms. But I did take some moss out. I love, once again, the moss. And I did give it a pot with holes. Because I don't want to lose those roots. We need those roots. Same goes with this. It's in a basket, this one. You can see there. It was losing the roots, but now uh, and the weather is better. But I, I think we might be on to something here. Not completely sure yet. Next year, around this time, I should know more <laughs> if it works. But um, yeah, this is also the same setup. This one didn't lose the roots, but yet still, I'm just going to try and see if I can get more roots, if they do a little bit better, etc. I think you get a point. Yeah, I'm really interested in myself. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, no, this is an old setup, but I can. Uh, can Turn some holes in if I want to. This is now in a tray. This is just repotted. The roots there. It had a lot of roots. So this one was in an old setup and didn't mind it at all. So not, not all of the warm growers, but some. And I, you know, like I said, I like to look at the best potential and try to, uh, to see if I can uh, make them a little bit happier. And my Ancelias, also in a uh, more airy setup, 
These roots are starting to take, they were very brown, like these ones. They also they need to adapt. Some of them are dead, some not all of them. If they are dead, they take the, they take the venom off. Let's see. That's, that's how I lose some roots, so that's not, uh, not what I like. These are also warm growers. It happens to, uh, to the warm growers most of the time. We have one here, this one, I'm sorry. Beautiful blooms. Net pots, water, and air. So who knows, who knows what they will do with that uh, bit of new setup. So yes, uh, the, here were a few updates, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, like I said, I personally really enjoy it, because I feel I have uh, the ability to put in a, a bit of extras that I'd like to share with you guys. Like, uh, especially the, the, the bit of change in my setup, uh, once again, for the warm growers, let's keep that in mind, mostly. Um, as you can see, they obviously uh, overall doing fine, and they have beautiful catlayers in bloom and peperatus, but like I said, I like to look at the, the best potential, and the best potential is not losing too much roots. So, uh, who knows? Who knows? Anyhow, uh, feel free to, uh, to add something in if you would like me to talk about a specific subject. Uh, maybe while we were film, while I was filming, uh, you saw something you want to know more about, feel free to ask me and I'm happy to make these videos. Once again, I uh, personally enjoy them. I hope you do too. Um, and this is it for now. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment section below. And I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.